I'll introduce myself, that's a little weird, but uh, I work closely with the Wisconsin Lakes Partnership Team, uh, collaborating on the development of educational programming and materials for people of the lakes. Areas of interest for myself are lake organization support in terms of their community goals, their goals around sharing lake management tools and helping them attain resources for aquatic ecosystems. I also aid people in gaining a better understanding and appreciation for the native flora of Wisconsin. I work at the University of Wisconsin Stevens Point's College of Natural Resources with the Extension Lakes team there and I work out of a, the DNR Service Center up here in Rhinelander. And what I'm going to share today is a program we're really getting close to uh, uh, rolling out. Uh, I know there's some folks who are probably on the phone have been waiting forever for this training to hit the streets and we're, I'm, I'm happy to say we're getting close. So what I'm going to do today in this talk about the Lakeshore Habitat Restoration Training for Professionals is I will describe the seven modules that go into the training and the 21 uh, or 22 lessons that go with those modules. I'll describe some of the learning objectives around those modules and, and they will talk through some of the themes and topics that those modules will include. I'll also share the timeline uh, as we adjust here. I have the hopes of rolling it out today with this talk, but uh, I have one more video I'm working on around native plantings that I need footage from once the snow uh, melts. So that video is coming and I hope to roll this out in late May or June. So we'll talk about that timeline and I'll talk about how you can get connected to the training by just sending me an email and getting in the queue so that when we roll this out, I can communicate to you the opportunity is out there and that the training is up and running. This training began in 2014 as a face-to-face -face training where our goal is to help give partners across the state a foundation to do sound and strong healthy lakeshore restoration projects. Using the state grants that are out there with uh, DNR as well as with the Department of Ag Trade and Consumer Protection. And then just some of the partnerships that go with that, that kind of work. And so the idea is to give folks who take the training a foundation to build on with a library of resources, connecting them to state standards and best practices, helping them understand some of the partners that come into play with pulling these projects off and so forth. And so we started the training in 2014 and had a couple hundred people take the training face to face over about four or five years. And then we have began this transition to the training becoming an online uh, opportunity. So the first module of the training, we share attributes of healthy lakeshore systems. And really the themes around a healthy lakeshore are very similar to that of a, a river or stream situation. But the idea is to understand that shoreland system. What does an intact lakeshore uh, have for attributes? Then we get into some of the lakeshore development history. How the, when we move from three season cabins to four season structures, we have brought some challenges with that development. If that development is done in unsound ways with excess nutrients and runoff getting to the water. Then we'll talk about how that water has changed in terms of lake health, what some of those challenges are, how they affect our wildlife and water quality. And so, uh, you know, it's about defining the ecological zones that we find on the lakeshore system, talking through the attributes that go with um, um, this system. And as I say, just sharing the story of, of how, as we've developed our lakes, some of our lakes have created uh, challenges around water quality and, and health. Module two, we get into the restoration side of the street where we define restoration ecology, uh, ecology and we talk through the, the common types of lakeshore restoration, the NOMO approach, the I have an intact shoreline, my job is just to keep it that way, and then spend most of our time talking about an accelerated approach where we put native vegetation in the form of plugs and, and, and buckets of shrubs and trees back on the landscape to jumpstart um, the restoration of the site. And so we'll go through the basic concepts around restoration in module two, 
We'll talk about the successional trajectory that goes with lakeshore habitat restoration projects once that plant material gets in the ground. And we'll talk about the uh, aforementioned uh, approaches to shoreline restoration out there. And then we'll spend most of the time digging into what a successful project with a lake shore habitat approach looks like. In module three, we get into one of the biggest challenges that we have on our shoreland systems and one that often brings landowners through the door to work on these issues and that's erosion challenges. And so the module three works with one of our DATCAP engineers that from the Department of Ag Trade and Consumer Protection, uh, Stacy Daney, who works in dozens of, or uh, uh, almost 20 counties up here in the Northwoods. And for a few decades now has been helping uh, counties and other partners work on erosion control challenges. And so the lessons involved with this module take you through the types of shoreline erosion we see on lakes and rivers. What uh, Stacy spends time on the slope and soil types, just getting us thinking about those aspects of the project. She spends time then going through surface water runoff factors, both up in the upland part of the uh, parcel as well as down by the water and how those two, um, uh, how that holistic approach to the shoreland property uh, plays into the erosion challenge. We'll go through quickly the causes of erosion, both passive and active. Um, so that is the erosive forces coming off land in terms of water movement, but also the wind and wave and ice energy that comes from uh, the lake side of things. And then lesson 11 is techniques for controlling lakeshore erosion, where some of the best practices and common bioengineering types of erosion control are looked at. So, uh, you see a picture of a water bar here. That's one of the best practices we can utilize in, in addition to say a rock infiltration um, pit associated with the water bar. Instead of this dirty water coming down, making its way past the uh, cabin or home into the lake, carrying dirty water and sediment with it, a best practice like a water bar stops that water, slows it down, allows it to uh, find its way into vegetation like this forest or a rock infiltration area where that water can settle down and infiltrate. And so bioengineering techniques are also uh, explored in module three. Module four, we get into the two big steps of looking at your site and, and thinking through the design and aspects that you learn from the site assessment that educates you to the conservation plan you go forward with for your lakeshore or river uh, restoration. And so we'll go through site assessment tips, uh, some of the things we wanna pay attention to on the property, not just at the land water interface, but from a holistic whole property point of view. And then we'll dig deeper into the design considerations, including laying out a native planting. How do we space it? What are they? Where do we get the plant material from? What kind of site prep do we have to embark on? What are some of the tips and strategies that go with the installation of the plants themselves, like starting with the woody material first and then coming back and putting in your wildflowers? What kind of spacing and so forth? Lesson five, we'll dig in deeper. We'll talk about why we utilize native plants, definitions and ecosystem services that these native plants give us. Uh, how they support wildlife and clean water. And then we'll also talk about uh, uh, designing and installing that native planting plan for your lakeshore habitat restoration project. So what steps do we take to pulling that plan together? How do we use that site assessment and design criteria that we reviewed in module four to uh, create a native planting plan to move forward on for our, our project? And so we begin to synthesize uh, definitions around native plants and understand why they're important and what kinds of services they bring to the project. And then walk people through the ideas and resources and best practices around constructing a sound native planting. So how do I develop a plan? How do I create a species list for my site using the site assessment information I gleaned? What, uh, how do I think about things like bloom time, wildlife value, the root structures that help from an erosion control point of view? 
Do I have a native community that I'm trying to restore specifically on my site? What strategies can I, I utilize to reach the goal of, of um, creating a certain restored na native community, for example? And then how do we work with those landowners? How do we take some of their goals and aspirations for the site and pay attention to those as we develop our conservation plan for the site? Module six helps us learn about the surface water grants that DNR has to support shoreland work. We'll also get into the Healthy Lakes and Rivers Initiative grant uh, that helps with five best practices around uh, water quality and creating wildlife habitat. We also learn from Department of Ag, Trade and Consumer Protection partners at the county land and water department level, as well as the state level, how that the rhythm of life goes with those projects and how that grant money hits the, hits the ground to help uh, communities work with shoreline restoration. And then we'll get, give you a primer on e-permitting, how you engage in the e-permitting DNR uh, platform to uh, work through the grant or through the permitting side of the street. And we'll uh, share just a short background information about shoreline zoning from a 101 point of view, just so that you have an understanding for what shoreline zoning is and how it plays into um, uh, these kinds of projects. And so uh, really it's about helping people connect to the funding opportunities that out there that are out there, some of the local partners, be it uh, land and water shops, local uh, nurseries, uh, restoration consultants, uh, the team of people that you can pull together um, to help you create a successful project. And then the last module of the training uh, connects you to an annual field day opportunity that happens uh, with the Wisconsin chapter of the North American Stormwater and Erosion Control Association. That event happens up at the American Excelsior Training Grounds in Rice Lake. Uh, it starts off in the morning at Indian Head College there with um, some talks and uh, current updates from different partners. And then in the afternoon, we head over to the Rice Lake uh, campus of the American Excelsior Company. And there's different demonstration projects set up, different stations uh, where we talk about different aspects of this kind of work. And so it's really an opportunity to, for folks to learn more about some of the best practices that go on. Also, what ha typically happens at this session is erosion control product providers have their products there and are able to be consulted in a meet and greet kind of a way and have a station where you can learn about what some of those products are and how we can utilize them with these projects. And so that opportunity is um, uh, typically annually the third week of September and up in Rice Lake. And then the course ends should folks want to get certified and what certified basically means is that you've taken the uh, 21 lessons of the of the course and then uh, we have a 50 question multiple choice test that if you want to get certified um, you can take that online test and if you get 70% or better you will pass the certification for the Lakeshore training. And so we invite uh, folks to um, uh, go to that training and then if they want to, uh, perhaps take the, the certification if they want to. You can email me to get on the email distribution list. This is gonna be a Canvas-based web platform. So the uh, University of Wisconsin Extension uh, uses the Canvas platform for our online learning platform to the public, both external and internal audiences. And so that's the uh, training that I've been learning the last couple months and I'm nearing uh, completion on getting that Canvas website created. But if you wanna get into the rollout email that for June, just shoot me an email and I will add you to the list. As I say, Canvas is that platform. The way it'll work is when you first come to uh, take the Lakeshore training, we ask first time online learners to create a username and password. And so the email that I will be sending out when the rollout happens is ac accessing that uh, starting process for accessing the trainings, including the Lakeshore training. It's self-paced, you go at your own tempo through the training. The idea is that you can take it at your um, 
Leisure, one of the feedbacks we got when we did the training in person for the first four or five years is, especially for folks who work in the landscaping business, it can be tough to come to a training during the growing season. So hopefully putting this up online provides more access for people. The other hurdle that we've been able to uh, break down with the online learning platform is um, the cost of the uh, training will be minimal. If any, we might have some basic costs of five bucks to get that certificate. But instead of charging 150 bucks, it'll be pretty uh, obtainable for anyone. And we recognize that not everyone will be interested in getting the certification I mentioned. Some folks, in fact, when we did the uh, in-person trainings, we had about 200 people take the course and a good 25% of them just wanted to take the course to get the foundation to be a local lake co uh, coordinator for grant projects or just they want to start shoreline work at the ground level in their lake or river community and just wanted to use the training as a springboard for background information and to create a foundation to go forward with. So with that, um, I hope uh, you'll join me in checking out the Lakeshore Habitat restoration for professionals training when it comes up and running here um, uh, soon. And uh, I'd be happy to, I'm gonna roll back to see if there's any questions from folks um, about the training or any follow-up questions for Pamela. And I don't see anything on my training in the question box. Um, Oops, looks like we just had some. Yeah, I don't see any new questions here, so I think we're okay. Um... I see a couple for you, Patrick. Oh, okay. I'll moderate you. <laughs> Thank you, dear. <laughs> How much time will the modules involve? Yeah, so that's one of the things we tried to do between the in-person um, training and moving to the online platform is part of what's taken so long is we pulled, we taped all the sessions we did um, in the last year of the training in person and shortened those videos quite a bit um, to make them shorter and, and get out some of the excess uh, baggage. So that was something we're trying to pay attention to. That said, there, uh, I would have to look, it's probably going to be somewhere around, um, 10 to 15 hours of, uh, of time. So um, maybe not even 10 hours, I guess I'd have to look. But we shortened the, vi the videos uh, quite a bit from the uh, two day session that it had been. Okay. Um, if we have an existing Canvas account from school, do we need to re-sign up? As I understand it, once you're in the uh, queue there, you will, once the uh, Lakeshore training becomes available through Canvas, it'll be there in the queue, just like the rest of the trainings. Uh, some trainings are open to external audiences, some are, are campus and external audiences, some are just campus-based. So, but if you're already in the queue with a logon and username and password, um, all you need to know is when the training is available and you can access it um, using that same, same credential. Okay, thank you. And then it looks like there's one more. Could we get your contact email again? I'm trying to sign up before I forget. I will throw it in the chat. <laughs> uh, P. Goggin at UWSP will find me. Uh, and I welcome, you can also Google Extension Lakes and find me under the staff uh, category on our webpage too. Thank you for doing that, Pamela. I think we've come up against our time here. I wanna thank Pamela for uh, sharing with us the, where Healthy Watersheds is going. I hope you'll take me up on participating in the Lakeshore training when it becomes available in a little while. And last, I want to thank Madeline for helping us navigate uh, the crazy world of Zoom here as we went through our session. So thank you very much for attending. Um, and I uh, uh, hope you have a great rest of your day. Thanks, everybody. Thank you.